Help, help. <laughs> I've lost an hour. <laughs> Could anyone help me find it? <laughs> oh, please. Brackets. <laughs> Pew. <laughs> Try looking in October. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> I woke up and I thought, gee, I had a good sleep because my these magic devices obviously update sort of automatically. <laughs> Where's my hour gone? And I looked at the real top, <laughs> which I've now updated too, so there we are. Right, Sunday the 27th of March, the last Sunday of March, 2020. <coughs> I wait to the news, as one does. Actually, I wait to listen to beautiful music, <laughs> funnily enough. Then the news. For what it's worth, Psalm 1, sung beautifully. Psalm 139, also sung beautifully. And Psalm 147, curiously, so three psalms. And then the slow movement from Schubert's Quintet, is it? And then the news. <laughs> to me, <coughs> Man, have two staffs. Are they staffs or staves? Anyway. It is blindingly obvious, and I don't see why it should be blindingly obvious to the rest of the world. How to put this? Christ came to give us the opportunity to rise out of our baser human selves. So if they strike you on one cheek, give unto them the other cheek. That is the phrase and every single hair on the head of your fellow man, woman and child is precious and special. Therefore, you can't kill them, you mustn't kill them, you mustn't think about killing them and that's it. Now, I think most people would find <coughs> the idea of sort of forgiving sort of a, a minor transgression by a, a neighbour or whatever is, is perfectly reasonable. Human behaviour. The news, of course, is unreservedly behind, as it were, the whole of the NATO countries, so the sort of the whole kind of Western Christian world, and sermons will be preached and so on and so on and so forth <laughs> throughout the world, today, Sunday, And yet, on this matter, the world is going against God, in general. Against the teaching that Christ brought us to show us how to rise above our baser human selves. Especially this, my country, England. Our past is appalling. I'm not going to go through a litany of the atrocities committed by the English around the world. And in God's name, that's the bit that really hurts. But the knee-jerk reaction is, and one can understand it, so the president of Russia, this man, Putin, 
has gone for a military option in Ukraine. Ergo, the response has to be a military option. So then this president who seems to be holding up remarkably well for just a comedian, as it were, and the whole country, Ukraine, seemingly united behind the idea of fighting physically, not spiritually. The spiritual fight is much harder. I mean, essentially what I'm saying is, turn the other cheek. Here is a war situation going on now, in my lifetime, off there in Europe, but it's involving <coughs> pretty much much of the world. World leaders, the Arabs, also there's a big uh, conference or something hosted by Israel, I think, is the other bit of news. Somewhere in the desert. Not to use all these vast arsenals of weapons we've got. Well, the classic arm argument about violence is if you, you know, you're attacked in your home and the person is going to kill your wife or something, you reach into the drawer of your desk and pull out your pistol and shoot them. Well, just for starters, I wouldn't dream of having any kind of weapon anywhere of that nature. I've got weapons on the ends of my arms, for heaven's sake, hands. If with ill intent, you're a human being is very capable of, of killing another human being with their bare hands, not strangling either. <coughs> That's probably another way of doing it. I think I know three, no, of three really quite easy ways to kill a human being just with your hands if you strike in an appropriate and killing place. It's the intent. This is the world I live in. So on the one hand, I think it would be very generally accepted that we want peace, that we're going to kill to get it. Well, that's as old as the hills, that argument. The end justifies the means. And it doesn't. If, if you're standing there in peace with a train of blood behind you and <coughs> all the people you've killed to get your peace, you and yours possibly, well, I'm sorry, no, no good. But that is seemingly, certainly amongst the powers that be, the authorities, the leaders of our world, absolutely the kind of knee-jerk reaction, and I just utterly disagree. Where are all the people, the sensible ones, as in it is now widely accepted in the West, I think, but England now, Chirac of France was always against it, the second war in Iraq. The indiscriminate slaughter of countless tens of thousands, I have a figure of a million and a half people, in, ci ci civilians, killed in Iraq, so we, the West, could just m control the Middle Eastern oil flow from Saudi Arabia and so on, and elsewhere around there, Persia as well, and Iran, and I don't know, the Iraq and the Bukh. perpetrated by the West in my lifetime. Well, there are consequences. You create martyrs. You kill someone who is sort of, by, by most standards, would be considered an innocent civilian. And that creates wherever they're from, and it creates a martyr, a freedom fighter, or whatever. The other lot call them terrorists, and then decades, if not centuries later, they all get around a big table, hopefully, and eventually say, oh, we're awfully sorry. 
I mean, this is a, a, a different sort of killing, but the slave trade took William Wilberforce 30 years to get it through the numbskulls of this country, my England, to abolish slavery in 1807. And then 200 years later, all the great and the good gathered together there in London at Westminster Abbey. The Archbishop and the, I don't know, the whole pack of them, Prime Minister and all of them, Foreign Secretaries and Home Secretaries, all the, the whole pack of them. Oh, we're so sorry. Yes, well, it's not good enough. Why not go for Christ's teaching in the first instance and don't start the killing? Where do we stop? That's the problem. This invasion by Russia of Ukraine. But I think the general idea from at least some of Russian thinking and so on, is in fact that Ukraine is part of Russia and it's been usurped by I caught the snippet old Radio 4 doing its stuff again I didn't actually listen to the whole programme but I understand that Poland as now constituted used to be I think the figure was five times the size it is now. So including territory from Germany and, I don't know, Belarus and Russia and all the rest of it. And then presumably there have been wars along the way, along the borders and so on and so forth. And then the borders settle down to where they are. And you can go on and on about that all around the world, about territory. Christ says, if they want what you've got, not only give them what they want, but give them more. Those are, I'm paraphrasing, but those are Christ's words, and it's very hard. I mean, relatively, here I am sitting in this magnificent material comfort. It's not quite a 500 million pound super yacht. <coughs> <coughs> Lou roll holders and the like. Well, it's definitely not <laughs> one of them. But relative to much of the world's population, what I have here is munificence. Fresh, clean drinking water, obviously electricity, gas, shelter, peaceful outside. It's a beautiful starlit morning. Sound of the birdies waking up. No likelihood of there being any, well, <laughs> hopefully many bombs going off and jolly little old Alec in the middle of Northumbria. Not that that's why I'm here. I'm here for the saints and Aidan, St. Cuthbert, the Venerable Bede, uh, King Oswald and so on. Back in the first millennium, that's in my spirit. But that's just funny old me and many others, Christians. I've spent a lot of time down in St Albans. I'm just going through some of my old films and stuff. And I was galloping all around the world and around Europe and whatever. So I've had a jolly good look at the rest of the world too, physically, practically. I've been in pretty much all the English-speaking countries and so on and so forth. Lived there, not just visited. So St. Alban, the first British martyr, <coughs> a Roman centurion, so a soldier, and saw the light of Christ and then refused to kill him. I was there on the 100th anniversary, 19... 2018. So the 100th anniversary of 1918, Armistice Day, November the 11th of that weekend, or whenever it was. I think it was the weekend before, actually. In fact, I think it was... October the 25th, the actual, I did a huge son of Lumia and just endless queues of very nice, predominantly white, middle class, nice bunnies, the sort of family I come from. So I'm not mocking, that is the sort of area it is. All commemorating 
the end of the fighting in the First World War, which of course was spoken of as the war to end all wars. And yet ever since there's been a war going on somewhere around the world. I'm afraid I found myself watching a YouTube video. I don't know where these things come from because I don't generally look at the military stuff, but it was a, a, a rocket launcher, that thing that takes out tanks and how clever and smart it is and how they're developing it into a cleverer and smarter one and so on. So, it's philosophically absolutely crystal clear. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. That's sort of from the Bible. <coughs> I'm sure the Greeks knew very clearly this, this argument for going back 2,000 years and more, 3,000 years, whatever. So I would hope somehow that I am not a voice crying in the wilderness all alone. Why isn't there a collective scream from all the people who went on marches in England about the, the wars in Iraq? I don't do that. It's just, I, I, I'm afraid I use my little grey cells and I could work out very easily that it doesn't achieve anything other than releasing your own feelings. But in terms of changing policy, I mean, the, the policy makers, Mr. Tony Blair, I mean, he just didn't listen and the government of the time, Jack Straw, the Scottish bloke, all of them, <coughs> all went for that war. Even this lady who's died, well, stood down now, the longest serving woman, Labour MP, she's either stood down or in fact has died, I'm not sure, sorry. I can see her, Beckett, Mar Margaret Beckett, isn't it? I think that's right. I'm not a, an expert at any of this stuff. It's just so simple. It's no big deal. Don't respond to violence with violence. Because the whole thing will turn into a, a unholy, what's it? And yet that was the news, basically. The thrust, the main thrust, of the West now is to go for arming up and uh, responding with violence. So somehow turning a blind eye, not seeing, not hearing the same story they see without seeing, they hear without hearing which are exactly Christ's words of the, those of the religious leaders. Where are the religious leaders standing up and just jolly well saying, <coughs> no, no more fighting, no more killing, just stop. And I don't hear it. I'm independent. <laughs> there are times when, quite frankly, I, I would rather leave this veil of tears. But I'm a fighter. I'm here. God's put me here in this earth. Freedom of speech I have. That's a blessed... And it's not a gift. You have to work for that. But it is a, a major matter in the world now as it is. No way could I speak like this in China without expecting consequences. And yet here, I don't expect any consequences. I've got barely anyone even bothers to watch my stuff. So it's a sort of blessing in a way. I'm sure there'd be many people who would wish to silence me speaking like this. 
ordinary, seemingly nice English people, former soldiers and the rest. Listen to Christ, see and hear what Christ said. Amen.